Now the progression that I'm playing over is an A minor going to a D minor back to an A minor. So the first lick it sounds like this. So I'm starting on the 10th fret on the B string. I pick that note twice. That leads into this bend from the 10th fret on the E string. It's a whole step bend, so I'm going from D to E. And when I have that note bent up, I sort of start releasing it and then come back on, which is just the 8th fret and 10th fret on the E string, and then ending it on the note we started on, on the 10th fret on the B string. So it sounds like this slowly. And the second lick, it sounds like this. It comes by really quickly. But it's actually harder, it looks harder than it is. Once you get used to this technique, it's really cool to play. So I'm starting with an upstroke on the E string on the eighth fret. And then next I'm going to the B string using an upstroke here as well. I'm doing I'm hitting that note on the tenth fret and pulling off down to the eighth fret. And then I use a downstroke on the G string on the 9th fret. So we're playing four notes. So I'm playing slowly, it's just like this. So you work on executing this cleanly at a slower tempo. And after a while, you'll probably get to that speed as well. It's just a matter of taking it slowly and playing it accurately. But it's important that you have, you don't get a lot of noise. And for me, I, th I think it works best to have two upstrokes in a row. The reason for why I think it's best with two upstrokes is because that lets me play a downstroke on the last note on the G. I could start with a downstroke on the first note, but I find it's more comfortable to play two upstrokes. See when I after I have done the, the pull off here, when I use the upstroke, my hand is up here now. I'm ready to hit that G string with the downstroke. And it's important that you get the notes muted and staccato sounding so they don't ring so much. It doesn't have the same effect as. And the third lick, it sounds like this. And this lick is played over the four chord, the D minor, but it's ending on the one chord, the A minor. So I'm playing the, the pentatonic scale. So this is on the D string on the seventh fret, switching to the G string, the fifth fret, and then from the seventh fret I'm sliding up to the ninth fret, and then B string, eighth fret. Then I do that slide again, and landing on the root note now for the 4 chord, D, 7th so fret on the G string. And all I'm doing after that is just adding the chord tones for a minor chord, which is... So I let that ring together. So this is G string, 7th fret, B string, 
sixth fret and, and the E string on the fifth fret that creates a D minor triad. And then I'm ending the whole thing when the chord comes back to the one chord to A minor. So I'm playing an A minor like this. And then I add a little bit of vibrato with my whammy bar, just for coolness factor. So it sounds like this, play slowly. You could, of course, use this chord if you like, but I don't like playing the bass notes too much when I'm playing chords. I just like the, the bottom three or the bottom four strings. And there's one thing I want to point out. When you're starting the lick, if you're starting with the ring finger, it's really tricky to switch quickly to the next string because you're going to be bending from the E string. So that's why I like to start the, the lick with my middle finger because that makes it easier to switch to the ring finger for the bend. You could do it with the ring finger, but it's quite tricky and it's easy to miss. So I prefer and recommend starting with the middle finger. So let's do the whole thing one more time. 